Taking gunfights in Rainbow Six Siege is hard due to the fact that it's a one-shot headshot game. So in today's video, I'll be giving you 12 aiming tips and tricks that you need for your ranked games. The first of which being with the lasers. Now, in the description, it says that it's a mountable laser sight that increases hit fire accuracy. So most people would assume that it only increases hit fire accuracy. But that's not the case. For shotguns specifically, it also increases the accuracy when you're aimed in as well. Don't believe me? Well, watch this. I'm gonna take my laser off of the shotgun. As you can see on the wall, I don't have a laser. Now I'm going to shoot my shotgun at the target. Notice the choke of that circle. It's pretty wide. Now if I go back and I actually equip the laser onto this shotgun, as you can see, laser is equipped, and then I shoot the exact same way, you can clearly see that the choke of this spread is much smaller and more accurate than the choke of that spread. Speaking of using a laser though, you need to know how to hold angles whenever you have a laser equipped. One of the biggest weaknesses of having a laser is that there's a huge red dot on the wall wherever you're aiming, which means that if an enemy sees this, they'll know where you're aiming and probably where you are too. Now, let's take this common shotgun place for example. This spot is called Bolo. This is because at one point, Bolo got a huge amount of kills from just sitting in this corner in one round. Now, if Bolo was using a shotgun and he had a laser equipped and he were to hold this angle, as you can see, the laser is clearly able to be seen on the doorway, which means any attackers that are right here can see that laser, and if they're a pro player, they'll probably know, hey, he's in this corner, and he wouldn't have gotten the cool clutch that he got. But if you as a player are using a shotgun with a laser like I told you you should be doing, and instead of aiming through the doorway or onto the doorframe where they can clearly see it, you aim it at the doorframe next to you where they can't see it, then this is no longer an issue. Your crosshair is still close enough so that when you see them you can easily just shoot and kill them, especially for my PC players, so the crosshair placement not being exactly on them isn't too bad of a thing. And it also stops them from being able to see your laser, while allowing you to still maintain that same amount of choke on your shotgun. A better way to get even better aim though is to have good aiming settings. First of all, you want screen shake intensity off. There's no reason to have this on. It just makes it swear if things explode, your screen shakes, which can really throw your aim off. Secondly, you want good sensitivity. Now, copying a pro player's sensitivity because you want to aim like them is a terrible idea. The reason for this being is because the reason that they have their sensitivity is because they've been playing on it for a long, long time, which is why they're so good at it. It's not the actual sensitivity, it's the time and effort they put into that sensitivity to get good that made them good. So what you need to do as a player is find a sensitivity that you are the most comfortable with, that suits you the best, and then just drill that over and over and over again every single day for multiple months, and then you'll get there. Not only is your sensitivity super important, but so are certain keybinds. Like, first of all, you want to have your lean on toggle. If you've been using lean on hold and you know how to quick peek already and you're already pretty good with it, then it doesn't matter. But for newer players, putting it on toggle is just going to get you a crisper quick peek, which is something that we'll talk about later. Going over graphic settings, I just have everything on super, super high because it looks good for the video. But you actually want the complete opposite. You want everything on low except for shadows and LOD quality. The reason for this being is because the lower settings you have, the less hard your graphics card in the bottom right has to work, which makes it to where you'll get more frames per second, which makes it easier for you to see, and therefore easier for you to aim. If you want a complete settings guide, you can check that out on my channel. But in terms of settings, that's pretty much about it. Not only can having the best settings outside of the game really help your aim, but so can warming up properly. Having a set warm-up routine is very important because it makes it so where your aim is at the top of its shape before you go into a ranked game. A lot of the times people will just hop into a ranked when they first get on. Even if you have some of the best aim in the world, you don't want to do this because you won't have your best aim that you've ever had if you didn't warm up beforehand. It's a slight difference especially to those that are more inclined to aim better, but it's a noticeable difference at that. There's multiple different avenues that you want to be warming up in a solid warm-up routine. There's recoil control, which you can easily do in the shooting range target. There's flicking and tracking, which you can easily do in the third lane of the shooting range. There's crosshair placement and trigger discipline and reaction time, which you can all train in the map training grounds. And then there's movement while shooting, which you can practice in the arcade. These are all very, very solid tips that you should be warming up on whenever you're trying to curate your own warm-up routine, whether it be 5 minutes or 20 minutes and it's something that you definitely should consider getting into if you haven't already. Something that's way more important though is holding angles properly. I've brought you onto Clubhouse to demonstrate this. Now as you can see, I've brought you into Cache, where you have the common head holes, reinforcement, and rotate combo. 
Now let's say you're playing top of red stairs and you're holding the angle onto the construction door because you know someone is there. Do you sit behind the reinforcement and hold the angle expecting someone to swing from the left? Or do you sit behind the wall here expecting someone to swing from the left? The answer is you actually want to be behind the reinforcement, and no, not because it's a reinforcement. The reason that you want to be on the right side is because if someone is swinging from the left, you want to be on the right, and if someone is swinging from the right, you want to be on the left. But if you paid attention, both times from both angles, I specifically said that they were swinging from the left, which means that sitting on the right is the correct place to sit. The reason that you want to be sitting on the opposite side of where they're swinging is because a numerous amount of reasons. The first reason is if they run across the door and you hold a super tight angle, you'll see a part of them run across the door, even if it's just an instant in a second. That gives you information, but also if they run across the door, they can't see you because they ran across the door and you're still holding this tiny of an angle. So you get information on them and they don't get information on you. Whereas if you were on the left side and they swung out the door, they'd be able to see you the entire time they were swinging, just like you'd be able to see them. So now they have information on you when in reality you could have just been on the right side and them have no information on you. Not only this, but if you're sitting on the left side, holding an angle is way wider, and holding it on the right side is a much tighter angle, which gives them a lot more room for error, and it gives you way more of a precise shot. Most importantly though, if you're holding the opposite of where they're swinging, you can control how much of them you see, and how much of a gunfight that you want to take. Whereas if you're on the left and they swing from the left, they're controlling how much of a gunfight is being taken, because no matter what you do, the entirety of the door is on your screen. So, it's just a great rule of thumb to peek from the opposite side of where you think they will be swinging. Not only should you know how to hold angles properly, but you should learn how to swing angles properly. Let's bring yourself into the attacker's shoes for the example that I just gave you. If I just took control of construction and I'm trying to do a cash push, how would I go about swinging this construction door? Would I just swing it like this? Would I quick peek and swing it? Would I run across and then swing from the other side? What would you do here? Well, there's two scenarios. Scenario one implies that you have a drone that you can use, and the more likely option scenario two implies that you don't. If you're an attacker pushing into cash from construction, what you need to be doing if you don't have a drone is quick peeking for information, which is something that we'll talk about later if you don't know how to quick peek. If you're quick peeking for information, all of the common angles, and then you see somebody, what you want to do after quick peeking, let's say I see someone on the head hole, is then change levels and then swing them. Whenever you swing them after changing levels, if they have their crosshair up here and they see your head up here when they quick peek, as soon as you go to swing, they're going to pre-fire up here where they thought your head was, but because you changed levels to crouch level, they won't hit your head, but you sure as hell will hit theirs. So it's just a good rule of thumb that whenever you're trying to swing and you quick peek and see somebody, change levels and then commit to the peek. You could even mind game it a little bit. You can quick peek and then quick peek down here to confuse them and then go back up and swing. You can do a lot of things depending on what elo you're in, but changing the levels whenever you swing is very, very useful. But if you need to learn how to swing correctly, then you need to learn how to quick peek correctly. Now, like I said back in my settings tip, you need to have your lean keys on toggle for the best quick peeking experience. But even if you have it on hold, you should be able to keep up here. What you want to do is aim in, and then you want to lean and move to the left at the same time. And then once you've gathered the information, you're then going to lean and move back to the right at the same time. Or if you're on toggle, just unlean and then move back to the right. So... Lean left, move left, unlean right, move right. And it's the same thing for the other side. You'd lean right, move right, unlean left, move left. It's very, very easy to do. And once you get the muscle memory down after sitting in a custom game for maybe 20 minutes, you can become 30 times better than everybody in your elo, especially if you're in a low elo. It's very easy to quick peek once you get the hang of it. And it's one of those skills that you'll use forever once you learn it, because it's going to be useful in every single meta and every single season, just due to the fact that that's how the game works. But if you try to quick peek and you have the wrong crosshair color, you'll lose the gunfight anyway which is why you need to have the correct crosshair color. Now, I have purple equipped, as you can see, but there are a plethora of other colors that you can choose from and some that you really should stay away from. Let's go over all of them from left to right. First of all, you have the default crosshair. This isn't really bad, and honestly, you could keep it. The green crosshair does kind of get old after a while, but it's not a bad option. Then you have light blue. This is really bad, because if you're trying to spawn peak a bright area, your crosshair will actually get flushed out. And because it's not a strong color, it's really hard to use, and it's hard for your brain to use in order to hit shots. Then there's blue. 
Now this is a prominent color, but because it's so deep and dark of a color, you have a harder time on darker maps and in darker settings. Then, there's turquoise. Turquoise isn't terrible, it just suffers from the same problems as light blue. Then, there's green. Green is good, but because green is such a bright and vibrant color, sometimes your brain can get distracted on the crosshair and not on the actual enemy that you're shooting. Light green is a much better version of green in my opinion, just because it's a little bit more of a faded color so your brain doesn't actually get distracted by it, and I know a lot of people that swear by light green over green, or vice versa, so I mean either way, these two crosshair colors are viable, as long as you're not running like turquoise or light blue. Then there's yellow, this one's just too bright, don't use it. Then there's light orange, this one is just too dim, don't use it. Then there's regular orange, this is just the worst version of light orange. Then there's red. We talked about with the default crosshair settings, this being viable, so if you want to run red, you can. Personally, I find it a bit distracting, but to each their own. Then there's purple, where every single color comes together and rejoices because you have found the perfect color. <laughs> All jokes aside, purple is just a great crosshair color because it mixes the perfect amount of brightness to darkness, the perfect amount of opaqueness to transparency, and the perfect amount of being a vibrant color with being a dim color. I love purple, a lot of people run purple, I definitely recommend you do it. White is terrible, don't use it, you'll get lost on any super bright maps when you're spawn peeking like Clubhouse, and then black suffers from the opposite issue. Now that you know what crosshair colors to use, you shouldn't have trouble spawn peeking or holding dark angles in any of your games. You will have trouble though if you don't know how to pre-fire correctly. Pre-firing in general is arguably one of the most overrated things that most Siege players do, and it's because they just do it wrong. The only time you want to pre-fire is if you're pre-firing a common angle that people hold, or you have information on somebody. Let me explain. If I'm an attacker and I'm walking down the main stairs of a clubhouse, a common angle that people will hold is the head holes on this wall right here. So what I can do as an attacker after making sure no one's in moto is I can swing and pre-fire the head holes that might be there. Because it's a common angle, sometimes you'll get a kill, sometimes you won't. But pre-firing just the left side walls right here in hopes that you'll find a head of somebody sitting in armory is a terrible idea and that type of pre-firing where you just randomly pre-fire through a wall because you saw someone do it in a youtube video is not good you don't want to be doing that instead like i said pre-fire common positions like these head holes here or if we bring it back to the top floor and you're in construction pre-firing the head holes that are typically there for rafters not only can you pre-fire common defender locations or even for that matter, attacker locations if you're a defender. But you're also able to pre-fire based off of information. So right here I have the reinforcement, feet hole, and rotate combo that are typically on the church triple wall when holding blue. Now when attackers push generator or blue, or whatever you call this area, sometimes they'll have a guy sneak down the secret stairs, or sometimes they'll have a guy sneak down the oil pit hallway. Now the reason that these feet holes are here is so that people who are playing inside of church can easily get information on anybody's feet inside of blue, so that they can pre-fire them through this wall that is typically right here. This is a great example of using information to pre-fire people. Now yes, you can see people through feet holes and pre-fire them, but that's not really pre-firing, that's just shooting through a wall. A better example is people love to play Valkyrie and throw a Valkyrie camera right there. That Valkyrie camera sees people who are in this hallway here and going down the staircase, so sometimes people won't even put feet holes on the wall that we just talked about. They'll just leave it soft so that they can ping people on the Valkyrie cameras on the other side of the wall, and then once they see that ping, they just pre-fire through the wall and get free kills. That's another great way you can use pre-firing is just by using information. An even more rare aiming tip and trick though is shot resetting, or in other words, tap firing. What a lot of people do when they're new to FPS games or new to Rainbow Six Siege in the first place is they will just spray magazines, and on guns like the F2 where it's a bit more recoil, this can be detrimental if you don't have recoil control. What you need to do instead is not only tap firing because it resets your bullets to the point of your crosshair where you can control it, but you need to be burst firing so that you can reset your crosshair onto where you want it. As you can see, whenever I spray a magazine and then I stop shooting, my crosshair comes back exactly to where it was earlier, which in this case would be this first red dot right here. So look, I spray, oh, hold on. <laughs> so look, I spray, and then my crosshair resets exactly back to where that red dot is. So you can use this to your advantage. If you're in a gunfight with somebody, instead of just spraying and praying and hoping that you can control the recoil, you can burst fire and let your crosshair reset on its target to get that free headshot. 
It's something that's pretty underrated, and it's more prevalent in games like CSGO, Rust, or Valorant, where the recoil is a lot more prevalent, but on guns like the F2 like this, it's something that you should definitely keep in mind. Speaking of general recoil control though, this is going to be my final aiming tip and trick. You need to get down your recoil control. The easiest way to do this is to come into the shooting range like I've showed you and go to zone 1. Once you're in zone 1 and you have the target, just go up to the target and without controlling any recoil or moving your joystick or mouse at all, just hold down M1 or if you're on console, hold down right trigger. What I just did here is I just mapped out the entire recoil spread of the gun. So now I know, hey, the gun just goes straight up and at the end it goes to the right a bunch. So now I know if I want to perfectly control this recoil, all I have to do is pull down and at the very end, pull to the left a little bit. So let's try it. I'm pulling down, pulling down, pull to the left, and as you can see, it's pretty much a straight up and down line. What I could do is get my up and down recoil control a bit more down packed so that I can get just a solid grouping instead of a grouping and a line in the middle. So let's try it. As you can see, now it's a solid circle instead of a circle and a line. We can even get it more down packed than that, but that's for a different video. With that out of the way, that's it for today's video. Check out this next video. My name's Alka, and I hope I'll see you there. Later.